We continue our discussion of the important themes in the play August Osage County by Tracy Letts. In the previous lecture, we discussed the theme of patriarchy and American memory, and in this video lecture, we discuss the theme of addiction in the play August Osage County. Let's look at uh, the theme of addiction. The inciting incident of August Osage County and almost all the action that follows is deliberated around the emotional and logistical vacuum created by addiction. In the play's prologue, Beverly Weston is Joanna Monewata to look after him and Violet, whose addictions, according to Beverly himself, have over time made burdensome the maintenance of traditional American routine. As the play unfolds, Let's, whose real life family was plagued by addiction, demonstrates the ways in which addiction cripples not just individuals but families as well. Through his searing portrait of uh, the Western clan's matriarch, violent and emotionally violent and verbally abusive pill addict, Let's ultimately suggest that addiction often masks other impulses tendencies or shameful secrets and that without attending to those demons, the specter of addiction can never be defeated. Violet is the most obvious and outlandish addict in the play. While Beverly has a self-admitted alcoholic at the time of uh, his death and had chosen to nurse his addiction rather than try to escape it, Violet spends much of the first half of the play denying her narcotics addiction to everyone around her, even as she pops pills in plain sight. As the open secret of Violet's addiction is dissected piece by piece, her behavior is revealed to be a cover of much darker impulses and a way for her to numb herself to the painful secrets of her own past. When Wilde first appears, she descends the stairs in a state of desire, mumbling incoherently, lurching around the house erratically and lashing out against Beverly in abusive verbal attacks. This behavior provides context for Beverly's twin senses of hopelessness and desperation. While it is a woman beyond saving, her recent diagnosis with a touch of cancer of the mouth has allowed her to legitimize her use of pills as a practical antidote to the hellish side effects of chemotherapy. And Beverly knows that he cannot do anything to stop his wife from pursuing her addiction, which seems to be her one joy in life. When the audience next sees Violet, she is disturbed but not incoherent. Nevertheless, as she anxiously awaits Barbara's arrival, she pops pills one by one, eventually losing count and asking her Ivy how many she has taken. Ivy, though, has not been able to keep track asking either. This scene demonstrates how Violet's serious addiction has become just another banality in the Western's lives. It's part of their family's world as ubiquitous as furniture. When Barbara arrives soon after this moment, she can tell almost immediately that her mother is high. Barbara warns Violet that she will not go through this again, implying that Violet has wrestled with addiction for many years and demonstrating that her family's previous attempts to intervene and get her clean have failed spectacularly. As the play progresses, the depths of Violet's addiction become more fully realized. She refers to her pills as her best friends and warns her family that if any of them tries to take them from her, she will eat them alive. Violet's vicious protectiveness of her addiction suggests that it's masking something even more terrible. 
And as the drama continues, the reasons for her attachment to that mask becomes clear. It is eventually revealed that Violet has taken her family's most terrible secret all along, that Lily Charles is in fact the child of Beaverly and Violet's sister Mattie Faye, not Mattie Faye, and her husband Charlie. Violet claims to have always known this truth, but to have never discussed it with Beaverly. Clearly, the shame, guilt, and pain of this secret has eaten both of them alive. Beaverly is dead by his own hand, and Violet is recklessly toying with her life. Each day, she remains addicted to narcotics. By the end of the play, Violet has seemingly returned to her addiction, despite her promises to her daughters that this time she would get clean for real. A erratic, violent, bizarre behavior in the play's final moments might also reveal an even darker truth that her addiction has left her brain so addled and damaged that the real Violet, whoever she was, is gone forever. In this reading of the play, the mask that Violet wore in the form of her addiction has become her real face, the only visage that remains. Through Violet, let's is making a larger comment on what addiction can do, not just to individuals, but to families. By the end of the play, Violet has lost everyone she claimed to love, her daughters, her sister, and her husband. Each and every one of them is as much a victim of Violet's addiction as she is herself. Each pays the price for her cowardly disappearance into the use of substances to disguise the truth that have they been aired in a loving, respectful, honest way might have been the family's salvation rather than its destruction. With this we come to the end of the discussion of the theme of addiction and the next lecture we discuss the theme violence, abuse and power. Thank you.